This is the all new Deepin 23 and it's an electrifying release that's unlike anything you have seen yet. If your current Linux distro is uninspiring, boring and you are going through the same old operating system and you are longing for something fresh, intuitive and visually stunning, well you are going to want to see this. Deepin Linux is a true game changer in the world of open source industry. It's not yet another distro using the same desktops and the same underlying tech. Nope. Deepin has its own desktop environment, its homegrown default software pack, its own innovative new package manager and a lot more going on. I've been using Deepin 23 for some time now and it's mesmerizing, I'll give it that. But it also had me asking some very important questions. Deepin Linux has had itself in the middle of some ugly controversies. So I started doing some research and what did I find out? Let's start from the beginning, shall we? This is the next X and today we are doing a deep dive with the latest and greatest Deepin 23. Starting off, Deepin 23 is based on Debian 12 Bookworm and it comes with its own Deepin desktop environment which is one of the biggest highlights of Deepin. Deepin, unlike most other Linux distros, does not share the same desktop or default applications as most other distros. Deepin developers have created an exclusive suite of default applications like the browser, software store and many other components, especially for Deepin. And this results in a very unique experience. Experience starts with user interface and the user interface here is created to impress at first look. Deepin desktop environment is a premium rush that looks stunningly gorgeous. It comes in two modes, a beautiful mode which looks very similar to macOS and an efficient mode which takes the windows rule. Yeah, the developers are targeting two birds with a single stone here. In both modes, the desktop looks very polished. Aesthetically, Deepin Linux is very beautiful. The attention to the details is apparent and you really start enjoying working with Deepin. The application menu too has two modes, an expanded layout which looks like the GNOME app grid and a compact one which takes the windows root. So whatever your UI preferences are, Deepin lets you configure it to suit to your liking easily. Deepin desktop is built using the Qt toolkit, the same as KDE Plasma and some similarities especially how different UI elements exhibit transparency are present here. We also get a notification center here which is beautifully made. We can also place widgets there. We don't have many widgets to choose from right now but this resource monitor is pretty slick. Deepin's application theme is one of the finest. You can see how the applications here look so uniform and refined. The file manager and the settings app here are Deepin exclusive apps and they both are so well made. Deepin's theme makes all the applications feel like they belong here. We also get in-depth customization options here. There is a set of pre-configured looks which bring their own unique variations here. Then there is a system wide dark mode which completely revamps how the system looks. It's super glossy and makes the screen look very expensive. Yeah. There are 9 pre-selected accent colors which you can use to make the system look more personal. These colors splash onto your apps very nicely. You can also go ahead and pick your own custom color but I found the pre-selected colors pretty neat in themselves. There are also some additional customization options in the desktop section. Overall, Deepin is a very premium desktop experience. It's very different from what we are used to, that's for sure. While the design language does borrow elements from the eastern side, the overall result is pretty amazing. It feels fresh. Check out my course Linux Mastery Express which is the fastest way to level up your Linux skills. I'll teach you a set of commands that will give you the confidence to use Linux without even a graphical interface. Then we'll dive deep and learn how to use the vEditor and master shell scripting with real examples. After teaching more than 100 students in person, I've curated the top things that will level up your Linux knowledge the fastest. The things that will make the most difference. So if you're feeling like your Linux game is stuck in the same spot for too long and you're ready to take your Linux skills to the next level quickly, check out the link in the description below and get your Linux mastery right now. The software availability on Deepin 23 is quite interesting. Deepin is based on Debian, so the core packages are managed by the app package manager. Deepin brings its own Linglong package manager to handle additional apps. Deepin lets you install Linux, Windows and Android apps without the need to install or configure anything extra. Yeah, Windows and Android apps too work here. We have Windows and Android apps in the App Store and they come packaged along with Wine or Android runtime packaged with the apps. Let's open the App Store here and it looks great out of the box. The design style looks inspired by iPad's App Store and looks very clean. Yeah, we do get to see a lot of Chinese characters here because Deepin's primary audience is Chinese. Let's go over that for a second and have a look at what apps are available here. We do see some familiar names here and we can browse through different lenses using the pages on the sidebar. Let's quickly jump to programming which I am interested in checking out. 
And we see many IDs here. We see Android Studio, Goland. Now these are not available in Debian repositories, but Deepin has brought them to you through its own repositories. You can see names like Google Chrome, Visual Studio Code, and few other items which are brought in additionally here. But yeah, primarily it's apps that the Chinese audience would resonate with the most that are found here. We can see big names like WeChat, QQ, Vcom, and Tencent software here. Most of these apps are Windows apps and they don't have Linux clients, so they are running with Wine packaged here. Now I couldn't search for and install many software that I use from the store here. Neither could I install them using the app command. I'm using Deepin 23 preview version for this video, so that might be causing the issue. I'll check again once when the stable release hits the shelves. We get the dev package installer here which lets you drag and drop .dev packages to install them. I like this, as it's a convenient option for users who are not based in China. Speaking about the software store, I want to see more apps from Debian repositories here and even the option to filter out non-English apps here. But for Chinese users, many of their major apps are here which are running either through a Wine package or Android version. All in all, in the software department, I have mixed reactions. I understand that I and most of you may not be the intended audience. That's why I'm not passing judgment but rather just stating the fact that there's not much for me here. But yeah, the software store is good and the developers have done great work bringing major Chinese apps here either through Wine packaging or Android, which is definitely commendable. Alright, moving on to the performance department. I had high expectations here as the desktop is built using the Qt framework and it does facilitate lightweight UI creation as we have seen with KDE Plasma. And Deepin stands up to expectations. Deepin desktop is smooth and runs great. Deepin automatically installs NVIDIA proprietary drivers, so working with the system was fluid smooth for me. App opening and switching was pretty smooth. But if you have older or low power devices, Deepin desktop starts to show struggle. You will notice stutters now and then, although very subtle. Deepin does make generous use of desktop effects. For example, have a look at the dynamic transparency here on the menu panel. While this is completely fine on even moderately powerful hardware, lower end computers will struggle. You can go ahead and turn off the desktop effects, but that kinda takes the fun off of Deepin. But yeah, turning off the effects is definitely helpful with regard to performance on older devices. On heavier tasks like gaming, rendering and compiling, Deepin performs good. But at times, you will see a difference when compared to something like Ubuntu. While gaming, I did feel like I was getting a lower FPS compared to Ubuntu. Deepin automatically installs NVIDIA drivers during installation. That's a huge plus point as I feel that many people are going to find it difficult to do it manually here. In the performance section, Deepin performs satisfactorily. I don't have any complaints but there's nothing to write home about either. But if you're using a laptop, then Deepin delivers noticeably improved battery life compared to other distros. This might have something to do with the Deepin scheduler or the hardware enablement kernel that they use. But it's definitely a positive point for most people. Deepin is Debian based and it has some very good stability policies placed to ensure an impeccable user experience. The user applications, the system and the kernel are all isolated from each other to provide a heightened system reliability. And its new Linglong package format installs isolated applications which are containerized. Linglong is a new independent package management toolset developed by Deepin. Just like other unified package managers, Linglong is designed to solve various compatibility problems caused by complex package formats and cross dependencies in Linux, as well as to reduce security risks. Linglong manages applications, runtimes and libraries in layers. This allows applications to be independent of each other and the system which improves compatibility as well as security. Linglong also uses a sandboxed environment to run applications which further isolates them from the system and prevents them from causing any damage. Deepin is based on Debian 12. Debian has a very strict package and integration testing process that ensures everything works together smoothly and harmoniously. This means any package you install will work flawlessly without any issues. The reliability that you get with Debian, no other operating system under the sun can match. And this one thing can be a huge point in day-to-day -day usage. Deepin builds on this amazing base to capitalize on this dependability. Deepin also comes with Linux kernel 5.18 but with hardware enablement. This means we are getting a well-tested and stable kernel but with support for newer processors, Wi-Fi cards and a lot more. I'm a big fan of hardware enablement kernels because they sometimes solve the Wi-Fi card, Bluetooth driver, graphics driver and other compatibility problems that many in the desktop Linux face. It also brings support for the latest Intel processors. And with this version, Deepin also brings atomic updates. That means more stability. With atomic updates, if anything goes wrong during an update process, which it can and does, the system just reverts back to the previous state without applying the updates. Great addition. 
talking about the usability, the UI and the default applications, they are all very well made. No arguments there. Deepin comes with a good set of default applications as well. Deepin comes with its own browser which is based on Chromium. This browser integrates nicely with the system and looks very good. You can even head down to the Chrome web store and install extensions from there and they work flawlessly here. We also get a simple text editor here which is again homegrown by Deepin. For office duties, we get LibreOffice here. This is a very good choice as I was low-key expecting to find WPS here. While office suits are mostly interchangeable, I feel that most Linux users feel at home with LibreOffice. We get LibreOffice 7.4 here. Apart from that, the standards like media player are all included here. The music player here especially looks very good. It has that modern touch because of Deepin's theme and design language. Overall, Deepin is immediately usable out of the box without you having to tinker around too much. One thing I want to notice, sometimes, rarely that is, the English that we see here feels off. I mean Deepin is a Chinese distribution and it's translated to English, so there's that. Then the software store, you already seen it. Most apps that we see here are Chinese apps, so for the most part, you'll need to install apps from the Debian repositories. If you're not in China, that is. If you're in China, you're good with Deepin. Okay, moving on to the main topic here. Deepin is a Linux distribution that's famous for its looks and that premium user experience. It definitely is one of the finer distributions. But it's also talked about because of privacy concerns. Deepin has its roots in China and due to recent developments in the relationship between the West and China, Deepin comes under that scanner. There is an alertness in the air about Chinese companies spying on their users. You might have heard about Huawei and TikTok concerns. The same thing applies to Deepin. On top of that, Deepin around 5 years ago did get into a fiasco regarding user privacy. Let's get into that briefly. Tech YouTuber Quidzup made a video about Deepin connecting to a server in China. Now the server in question was CNZZ, which is a major analytical data service just like Google Analytics but for China. Now Deepin officially made it clear that their app store was in fact a website packaged as a desktop app, which is fine. And most websites do use analytics services to measure things like how the user is using their website. Nothing wrong here. But we Linux users are more conscious about privacy and data collection. Which means this became a huge red flag against Deepin. But yeah, Deepin did respond and clarified what was going on. Now what many people don't know is, Deepin even went as far as to get their code audited by SUSE, which is a Linux giant. Now the code audit was not completed because of some other reasons. But still, if they had something to hide, they wouldn't agree to expose themselves, would they? And yeah, Deepin is an open source Linux distro and its code is available for anyone to have a look. Also, you can easily track and control what servers and websites Deepin or any other distro for that matter connects to. These things are easily trackable. But yeah, Deepin did find themselves in a hot soup and in today's date and time, that can be enough to hurt your consumer base. That's the story of Deepin's debacle with privacy. To use or not to use it, I'm gonna leave that to you. Alright, Deepin23 comes with a new Debian base, a refreshed desktop that continues being stunningly gorgeous and an experience that's way different from what we Linux users generally get from other distros. The things that set Deepin apart just get better with this new update. Yeah, Deepin is a Chinese audience-centered operating system, but I really enjoyed using this for a fortnight now. It's fun, different, and I got a nice overview of what's going on in the eastern side of the Linux world. My honest thoughts, I actually love the desktop, but because of the app seen in Deepin, I might not be able to use it on a daily basis. But you can get the same fantastic desktop experience on other distros, and even Ubuntu has an official Deepin desktop flavor. I'll do a video on it soon, so make sure you're subscribed and the notifications for this channel are turned on to catch that. You might want to give Ubuntu Deepin Desktop Environment a look if you want all the great things about Deepin minus the not so great. But for the Chinese audience, I'm happy to see Deepin doing some phenomenal work and the Chinese, they have a distro that they can realistically use, which makes even their app ecosystem available here. Just great work. Alright, if you found value in this video and enjoyed it, definitely have a look at my course Linux Mastery Express, which is the fastest way to learn Linux and level up your skills. You'll be learning the Linux fundamentals, the V editor and shell scripting in a quick and on-point way. Next up, check out 2023's 7 best Linux distros. I've got some really cool ones there so don't miss that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave me a big thumbs up. This is Linux Techs, signing out.